Hi everyone, my name is Yu Hang. I'm from Cornell Tech. Uh, today I'm going to present our design of a VR controller that enables people with visual impairments to physically navigate virtual reality with haptic and auditory feedback. So this work is from Microsoft, collaborated with Cindy Bennett, Banco, Ed Cultural, Christian House, Mary Morris, and Mike Sinclair. So talking about virtual reality, I believe everyone in this room knows how impressive it can be in changing and improving people's life. However, the current VR technology mainly rely on generating realistic visual feedback to generate the immersive experience. It is very vision dominant, but it is not accessible to people with visual impairments. This actually prevented them benefiting from this very important class of emerging technology. Even though some prior work tried to design different VR experiences for people with visual impairments, for example, people can use audio feedback to describe the different VR, uh, however, the audio actually has very limited capability in informing the exact shape, position, or layout of the virtual space. And also some researchers used haptic feedback, like they can use joystick or a controller attached to a grounded uh, robot arm to generate haptic feedback. However, these are mostly used in very stationary situation. So actually there's no way for people with visual impairments to physically walk around the virtual space and have a very immersive experience. And this actually shows a great gap in accessibility research field. So address this problem, the goal of our research is to design a VR controller that enables these people to physically walk around, navigate, and perceive virtual space. And also, since the white can is one of the most common tools for people with visual impairments to perceive the real world, we want to simulate the interactions of the white can and adapt them into the virtual space so people can use their real world can skills directly to navigate a virtual space. So before we conducted our design, we actually conducted a formative study to understand why blind people want to use VR. What do they expect from VR? And also we want to understand the use of the white can to inspire our design. So we actually had interviews with seven people with visual impairments. They are all can users. And also we talked to uh, orientation and mobility instructors who are specialists uh, who teach uh, blind users how to use a can. So we talked to these people and we find that all of them actually have great interest in virtual reality and they believe they have the equal right to have access Sorry, I'll disconnect it for a minute. Sorry, my computer was just so excited. <laughs> All right, so we found that all participants actually they show great interest in virtual reality and they believe they have equal right to access to different virtual reality applications. And also the orientation and mobility instructors, they also recognize the great potential of virtual reality. They want us to simulate different uh, training scenarios to help their blind students to better learn how to use a webcam. And also, we learn how our participants use a white can in their daily activities to inspire our design. So first, we find that they actually uh, use both the tactile and auditory feedback from the white can to understand the real world. And also, they use the different uh, can techniques. For example, the two-point touch, which is they use the white can to tap both sides of the walking path to protect their body. 
and also there is constant contact, which is they sweep their can from side by side, and also with the can tip always in contact with the floor, which is a more reliable and thorough scanning. And people also use shorelining, which is used to walk along different vertical surfaces, for example, the wall or curves. So they tap the wall, drag it away to the other end, and tap back. So they usually use this to walk along corridors or hallways. So from this formative study, we actually summarized uh, some design implications to guide the design of our controller. We first want to support multi-model feedback, including both auditory and haptic feedback to provide a sufficient experience of how a user uses a white can in their real life. And also we want to support the different can uh, techniques, as I mentioned before, those three different techniques, so that the users can use their original can skills in the virtual space, which can definitely reduce their learning curve. So with these design implications, we design our controller. We call it controller, which is a variable VR controller that people can wear in front, in front of their waist. So as you see in this image, this is a person with visual impairment who wear the whole setup. So you may notice that the, the user also wears a headset in front of their eyes. But at the current stage of our prototype, we don't provide any visual feedback. So the reason we use this headset is we want to track people's position and then provide spatial audio feedback. And the other image shows the structure of our controller, which includes a vest that people can wear in front of their body, and also a particle break mechanism to generate physical resistance and also a cane controller, which is actually part of the real cane that the people can hold and sweep to control the movement of the virtual cane. We also have a slider to connect uh, the controller between the brake mechanism, a voice call to generate uh, vibration, and also a tracker to track the movement and position of the controller. And I'm going to explain how these different parts can work in, later in my talk. So you may notice that the controller is actually much shorter than a real cam. This is because we don't want our controller to have contact with the physical environment, like the walls or the floors, to reduce the, its impact on the virtual experience. Even though the can is shorter, actually the virtual can it represents is as long as a real cam. So this image actually shows the virtual can overlaying on the real environment. So with this whole setup, our system actually supports three different feedback, including physical resistance, vibral tactile feedback, and also spatial auditory feedback. So we first use the particle break mechanism to generate physical resistance if the virtual can hits a virtual object. So this is actually a mixed reality video with the virtual can hits the virtual trash can overlaying on the real environment. And by default, the brake is actually set off and it allows a 360 degree of rotation. And if the user sweep the controller, it will drag the slider and rotate around the brake. But if the can hits the virtual object, the brake will set on to 100% and lock the slider so the users cannot move towards to the virtual object anymore, which simulates the physical resistance people can feel when a real can hits a real object. We also use the voice call to generate vibration to simulate the feedback how, when a real can interacts with the physical environment. So for example, this when it hits a trash can, it generates a very sharp pause to simulate that feeling. And if people sweeps on different surfaces, such as this carpet, it also generates corresponding vibration. So beyond that, we also provide spatial auditory feedback to simulate the sound when a can interacts with the physical environment. 
So this is a song when it hits on a plastic hollow trash can. And this is the sound when it sweeps uh, on the virtual carpet. So with all of these feedback, our system can support the three different can techniques we figured out in our formative study, which includes shorelining, constant contact, and also two-point touch. So this is a video showing a user use a virtual can to tap and walk along the virtual wall. And the users can also connect a constant contact by user can to sweep on different surfaces. And this is a tactile dome, which is a textured ground surface. People can use the can to feel to understand where the street curb is. And we also simulate the feedback when people sweep on this kind of texture. And also the users can tap on different virtual surfaces to conduct a two-point touch. So with all of these different can techniques, our participants with visual impairments can actually use our controller to navigate different virtual environment. So this is an example how uh, uh, participants with visual impairments navigate an indoor scenario. And to reduce the difficulty, we actually told them what virtual objects are in, are in this room, and we just need them to locate uh, and uh, discover which everything is where. So now she's sweeping. I found the trash can. I'm tapping. I found a table. I found the wall. I found the door. All right, so that's the design and interaction of our controller. And we also want to understand how effective this controller is and also what our users' behaviors when they use our controller compared with their behaviors when using a real can in the real world. So we actually conducted a user study with nine participants with visual impairments, and they were all legally blind and also can users. So the procedure of our study includes three parts. Uh, the first is a tutorial session, which people uh, conducted. Uh, we teach people how to use our controller. And then we ask them to navigate two different scenarios, include both indoor and outdoor, and also have a general interview about their experience. So this is the indoor scene, which includes the table, carpet, uh, trash can and door. And we ask the participants to freely explore this room. And after they feel confidence about which object is where, we ask them to stand still and point to the direction of each object. And the other one is an outdoor scene which simulates a street crossing scenario. And participants were asked to cross the street based on uh, their feedback from the controller. So based on this study, we actually find the controller is very effective in enabling people to perceive different VR environment. So for the indoor scene, eight out of nine participants can correctly locate all the virtual objects. And for the outdoor scene, six of them can successfully cross the virtual street without any assistance from the researchers. However, three participants has a little difficulty because we ask them to listen to the surrounding uh, traffic sound to understand where the street is, and three of them has difficulty with that, which brought, brought a little problem when they cross the virtual street. We also try to understand people's behaviors when they use our controller. And we find actually all the participants, they use the, their real world can stick skills when they navigate the VR world with our controller. And also, they use the can controller to perceive the size and the shape of the virtual objects. 
So this is one participant mentioned. Uh, she said, it's a big desk because I found two legs and then a while after I found the third one, which means they actually can understand the different parts of the virtual elements and also connect them together to build a higher level mental model. So these are the, uh, some of the main findings we have. And if you're interested in more details, you can read our paper. So our study actually proved that controller is a very promising tool to enable people with visual impairments to perceive and navigate different virtual environment. And also our controller has a great potential in different applications. The participant mentioned they want to use it for uh, learning on new places or even game experience. Like one of them mentioned he actually wants to use the virtual cane to poke a fast moving car like the Superman. And also the orientation and the mobility instructors also saw the potential and they believe we can use our system to simulate especially the environment with high risks when people are learning how to use a can so that we can help them build more confidence. To summarize, uh, we designed controller, a variable haptic controller to enable people with visual impairments to physically navigate and perceive different VR uh, world. And also we conducted a user study to understand their behaviors and also the effectiveness of our controller and uh, in different scenarios, which proved that our controller is actually very effective. So we hope our research can inspire the future researchers and also designers to take into account accessibility when they design different VR applications and make VR more inclusive. Thank you so much. Can I ask questions? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I have two quick questions. First mm -hmm. one is, okay, uh, VR is, uh, uh, the VR experience here you show is about uh, uh, experiencing the um, navigating the virtual world. I'm wondering if you have thought about uh, some sort of bi-directional interaction with the virtual world, seeing that uh, uh, in VR, the known people can actually create, uh, construct or destruct the uh, virtual world. Can we somehow uh, let the visually impaired people to also experience such thing? Second question is, uh, is it possible to, to build some sort of a collaborative virtual environment uh, uh, which involves the uh, visually impaired people and their family, perhaps? Um, oh, by the way, this is from Purdue University. Thanks. Yeah, so thank, thank you for the question. I, I think these two questions were like both kind of ask like the, the potential, like what our controllers can actually do, right? Like uh, how to help people build a, a different uh, VR environment, different models, and also whether it can be used in uh, maybe a collaborative situation. So uh, my answer, I guess, we are not very sure about like what uh, application it can support. So what we currently do is we want to provide a way, an opportunity for people to be able to navigate different VR space. And it definitely give a amount of opportunity to, you know, use in different applications, including co a collaborative environment. So in the current stage, we are trying to um, explore the potential basically and try different scenarios. But I think, yes, like in the future, like in the next step, we definitely want to look into different directions and see what it can actually be used and how effective it is. Okay, one more question. Hi, um, it's a great work, I appreciate it. And um, I'm Suyan Ni from uh, the Pennsylvania State University. And uh, because the, the prototype, it's a prototype, so there is a, like a lot of things added, and then the real cane, the length, and then the prototype is a lot shorter than the real cane. And I'm wondering about their like uh, people with the visual impairment, the real experience of um, using that cane in terms of weight of the real cane or the weight of the prototype cane, and also they how they grip the cane and how they because like real cane, there is an angle and there's a weight, and the way they. Um, learn and the way they use is like maybe I'm not sure but uh, the prototype VR gives the experience they gave is dif dif different from the real um, cane so have you like um, 
ask or uh, study about their experience of with using VR, or uh, also there's like a steps, like people go down to steps down and steps up, like in the kind of like context. Have you um, have you studied with those kind of different context of uh, the environment? Yes, so actually uh, we did exp uh, like ask participants like their experience and whether it's uh, how different it is from using a real cane. And as you said, it's uh, much shorter than the real cane, right? So, and also we have this brake mechanism and also the tracker voice coil attached to the controller, which definitely will make the controller much heavier than a real cane. And also it's not in contact with the floor, so it won't get, uh, you know, force support in the vertical direction, which definitely will make the cane heavier. But that's only our current stage. So as you saw, we are using a brake mechanism to generate uh, physical resistance, right? Currently, it's only in the horizontal direction, but in the future, we are considering to add this mechanism in both, uh, like, the 3D dimensional direction, which includes the vertical direction, which can generate the force, like simulate the support that the ground can provide, which we believe can maybe can address this problem. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, let's thank our speaker.